Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello and welcome to the video for how do I change the default spawning character. So you may have gotten to the point where your default character, in this case I have a third person template, I hit play and my little character can run around. But this character is not the one I want. For whatever reason I need to change it. And there's a couple good reasons and I'll cover them here shortly. So we'll cover the basic ways of how you change your default pawn. Now default pawn or default character is important to remember because that's what the engine refers it refers to. Refers to the default pawn is what we are referring to in the engine. There we go. So if we go to edit, project settings, and then we go to our maps and modes, our game mode is what determines our default stuff when the game starts up. HUD class, player controller, spectator, and our default pawn. In this case, our default game mode, third person game mode, and our default pawn, third person character. So when we hit play, if we haven't done anything else, we're going to get our third person character as our default character. And of course, you can choose any other pawn or character. In this case, maybe, you know, I have our first person character. If I change this, default game mode, default pawn class, and I hit play, you'll notice now all of a sudden I have a first person character. So that's great if you want to override things for the entire game. Our default game mode will determine what our default settings are so let's change this back to third person but let's say you want to change it on an individual level or you have other things you want to do we have the ability to override the game mode so in this case i have a game mode called default spawning you can right click blueprint create a new game mode base and that's going to give you a new game mode if we were to open it up we're going to get the same list we had before inside of our player settings we can change our default game modes in here, for example, you can see I've changed my default pawn class to none. None is valid. That just means nothing's going to spawn in. So in this case, if I wanted to change my edit, project settings, and then we were going to go to our maps and mode and change this to our default spawning, now when I run this, we're going to get nothing. What we're seeing here is 0, 0. If we hit eject and zoomed out, our default camera is going to spawn in at zero zero in the world because we have nothing else f to actually come in we have no default pawn well let's say that's not what we want let's change this back to our third person game mode so that way it doesn't mess up anything let's say this is going to be a level where we have a fixed camera so in the case i have a camera f sitting over here and we want this camera to be what we see well if we drag in a camera and we go ahead and we go to the details on the camera we can find down here the auto activate for player so if we change this to player zero and we hit play well now we have that camera as our default and we have our player here which we can still control because we're still spawning our default player but we're also changing our default camera to this camera that we just spawned in okay that's great and all but let's say we actually don't want a player maybe this is a main menu you don't actually need a player spawned in or a pawn spawned in because our main menu is going to have a user interface. But we don't want that to be everything, of course. Well, we have our game mode override. So if we go to our world settings, so you could go to world, world, window, developer tools, not, not developer tools, world settings right here. It'll open up, and in here we have the game mode override. And by default, you'll see it's none. None, null. It's going to use the default game mode, the one we have in our project settings. In this case, we can go to our default spawning. And this will allow me to use my default spawning as my default one. Let me go back to our camera and let's set our camera back to disabled. We're no longer going to auto-activate our camera. And when we spawn in, you should see what we expect. We are now using our overriding, overriding, overridden default spawning game mode, which has no pawn. Therefore, we have nothing set up. We see nothing. Now, if we had a user interface on top of this, then we don't care where our default camera is spawning in. Our user interface is on top of it, and everything will look fine. We don't have to worry about accidentally moving a character in the background. Okay. We have the ability to change it here. But let's say you wanted to, for example, use something special. You don't necessarily need a camera actor, or you don't want to use the auto-activate. You want to do it in another way. 
Well, if you want a fixed camera or you want a fixed pawn or you want something else to be your default already in the world, but you don't want to, for example, have it spawned in as your default, maybe we have a third-person blueprint and we're going to drop him into here. We want him to spawn in a little bit later, and once he spawns in, we want our player to control it. Well, we have our details again. We have the ability to auto-possess, if we can find that hidden in here. We have our auto-received input. Here's our auto possessed player. So we set this to player zero. We hit play. Well, there's our player that we spawned in, even though the settings are set to none. So that's how we might want another player or pawn or character to be controlled by our default player zero, which we set right here, auto possessed player. However, we don't want our game mode to spawn something in. Okay, well, we don't want a player, we want a camera. But we don't want to use the auto activate option or maybe we don't have the auto activate option well we have the set view target with blend we can always grab our camera actor now you can only do this in the level blueprint because the level blueprint exists right now during creation time anything in our world at design time can actually be referenced by it so if we go to our blueprints level blueprint you can actually see we have something set up and then we could right click and create a reference to camera actor we could create a reference to anything we actually have selected. So in this case, a floor. We can use the set view target with blend node, grab our player controller, grab the camera actor that was in the level, and then now that it's hooked up, if we hit play, now we have our camera actor in our world set up as our default view. And this would be useful if, for example, a main menu, but you still needed a camera. Maybe your main menu was on top of the world and you had a view into the world while you saw some stuff going on in the background. An animated main menu. Or maybe you have a fixed camera set up where you don't actually need a player and you end up clicking on items. More of an interactive puzzle game. So those are the basics. Those are the basics of how you can change your default pawn or default character. The maps and modes in your project settings controls your default. This is your default game mode with your default pawn class that overrides everything. The individual world settings can override that. You can always drop in items and control them individually in the settings in here, such as your auto possess and auto activate for players and characters. And you have the ability to simply change your view target, the player's camera that they're going to use, using the view target with blend node. And that's it. Those are the basics of how you might want to change the default character inside of your project.